Uh, Mr. Jacobson, your organization has played a very important role in improving the diet of Americans. My question relates to food stamps. Millions of Americans are today, many more than before, are taking food stamps because of the recession or depending upon that for their source of food. Uh, is there a restriction now on the kind of food that can be bought with food stamps? And if not, uh, would your organization be in favor of a restriction restricting food stamps uh, to eliminating junk foods, shall we say, yeah. and on, on the positive, uh, limiting uh, food stamps to good food. Uh -huh. And to what extent also do you think the Obama administration, with what you mentioned earlier, would be in favor of such a policy? Uh -huh. Okay. Thanks for that question. I'm relieved that it's easier than the one you threw at President Bush. Uh, <laughs> uh, f food stamps can be used for any food. They can't be used for vitamin pills, though. They can't be used for toilet paper or alcoholic beverages. But they can be, and they are used, to buy candy and soda pop and chewing gum and uh, all kinds of peripheral junk that doesn't contribute to the, to the consumer's health. I'd like to see food stamps limited to healthier foods or at least not used for the obvious junk. You know, some, and you have to define it legally. Soft drinks would be a relatively easy category to define. Um, there's almost no support in Congress for that kind of a change. Uh, I doubt that the Obama administration would support it. And the reason is that the, um, well, the soft drink industry wouldn't like it. You know, that's one thing. But more importantly, probably, is that anti-hunger groups have opposed restrictions on food stamps. They see food stamps as um, uh, an income supplement and, and not necessarily a nutrition program. And they've taken a, a really hard and fast position on that um, in saying it's patronizing to consumers to say, you, you can't use food stamps to buy this. You can only buy that. Um, so I don't see much progress being made on that. Um, the, to promote healthy, and the Department of Agriculture says <coughs> that it, uh, not allowing food stamps to be used to buy soft drinks or candy might not have much effects on people's diets because most food stamp recipients have some of their own money. And they might switch their, per, they might use their own, if, if they couldn't buy soda with, their, with food stamps, they could buy soda with their own money. And so instead of buying something else with their own money, they might buy soda. And the Department of Agriculture has done some economic modeling and has concluded that uh, there wouldn't be much of an improvement in diets with that kind of a restriction. But to promote healthier diets, a different kind of change could be uh, more beneficial. And that would be encouraging people encouraging the use of food stamps for healthy foods let's say fresh fruits and vegetables or fresh and frozen fruits and vegetables and you could do that by saying to people look if you buy a dollar's worth of apples uh, the um, your food stamp your food um, you know you get a credit card like uh, thing uh, um, it'll only charge you 70 cents instead of a dollar and uh, that would have a significant, it would put more money in people's pockets for the healthiest foods, the foods you want people to buy. And it's more expensive, though, right? Because if you're going to give people, you know, you're giving people $1.30 instead of a dollar when they buy uh, fruits and vegetables. So there are experiments going on around the country that will take several years, I think, to see in reality would that happen? Would people eat healthier diets if they were uh, encouraged by food stamps to choose healthier foods? Uh, Dr. Jacobson, uh, recently I heard an amazing statistic from Dr. Ursula Bauer from the Centers for Disease Control. She's the director of the National Center for Chronic Disease and Health Promotion. She said that 70% of kids have a television in their room. And she talked about the connection with obesity and what was interesting, it, one would think it's related to physical activity. She tied it to the commercials that these kids were watching. And to use your term, which I now know, junk food, 
that they're eating and being exposed to through the commercials and those ties uh, and the, uh, the net effect on these children. Uh, can you talk about what's happening around advertising of junk food uh -huh. and uh, your feelings about that? Sure. Uh, <laughs> what would Stephen Colbert say? If we can have a chicken in every pot, why can't we have a television in every child's bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, kind of two, two big issues. One is marketing of foods to children. Um, the last time the Federal, the Federal Trade Commission tried to ban all advertising to kids, young kids, saying it's simply unfair. Young kids don't understand the concept of advertising. They think the adult world is there for their own good and would only do good things for them. So they're very gullible. Uh, the Federal Trade Commission considered a ban and of all advertising, you know, movies and junk foods and mattresses, whatever they advertise. And Congress stepped in, a Democratic Congress stepped in and chopped off the FTC's hand. And to this day, the FTC has less authority to regulate children's marketing than, than marketing to adults. Um, the, um, and I think the current FTC would have probably as hard a time, would never get something through the Senate. Uh, so the administration is trying something in a more voluntary uh, way, which is uh, uh, the Federal Trade Commission, Department of Agriculture, Food and Drug Administration and Federal Communications Commission are developing nutrition standards, voluntary nutrition standards for marketing to kids. And their sneak preview in December was very good, uh, remarkably good. They were supposed to have issued the guidelines, uh, they were supposed to propose guidelines in February. The fact that they've been delayed suggests there's some difficulties, probably because the guidelines were so good. Um, there's, they're doing that because Congress said you have to have guidelines by July. So presumably they'll come out with some proposals and have final guidelines that will um, be a benchmark. And I think it will be at industry's peril if they ignore these voluntary guidelines um, and continue to market cheeseburgers to, to kids and Chuck E. Cheese and other, other junk. Um, if they ignore the guidelines, that would give the government a strong basis for demanding legislation. I think companies will, it, will abide by the guidelines, and I suspect they're trying to weaken them to make, it them more, make them more palatable. Whatever the guidelines are, though, I think we need a government program to encourage kids to eat healthier foods. Uh, PepsiCo, uh, KFC, McDonald's, Kraft, Nestle, Unilever, all these companies that advertise don't make fresh fruits and vegetables. They don't make you know, a whole wheat bread. They make basically processed foods that aren't terribly healthy and they can lower the salt or throw little whole grains in, throw some peanut shavings in. But you know, kids need to be encouraged to eat real food and only the government can do that. The broccoli industry doesn't have the money to put ads on the air. And maybe we'll, maybe we'll see that. Maybe some will come out of this, um, the, um, this new funding. But you, you, know, you raised that issue in connection with obesity. And I just wanted to say that obesity is going to be an extremely difficult problem to, challenge, challenge, uh, a problem to overcome, much harder than tobacco. Tobacco, you know, there's, stop smoking. You know, it's one thing. It's relatively easy. Uh, conceptually, it's totally unnecessary. Obesity results from so many different factors that are uh, characteristic of a modern industrialized nation. Uh, 